As the health care leader of the Tri-Parish community and with its Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at the forefront of cancer research and treatment, Terrebonne General Medical Center is a nationally recognized facility providing state-of-the-art technology and advanced services. Terrebonne General compassionately provides the most services responding to the greatest needs for our community. All right, to your health with Terrebonne General Medical Center. Proud once again to introduce our guest. Let's take a look at him right now. He's been here before, and his name is Dr. Jeffrey Long, radiation oncologist at Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at Terrebonne General Medical Center. Good evening, Doc. How are you doing tonight? Well, good evening. I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be back. Well, good. We love having you on. And in March, of course, is a big month. I don't want to steal your thunder, so exactly how does March fit in uh, with Mary Bird Perkins? So give us a little information. Absolutely. On March is National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. The Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC would like to educate the tri-parish community on colorectal cancer and the preventive measures available for this aggressive disease. A TGMC would also like to encourage those concerned about developing colorectal cancer to come out to some of our free screenings we're going to be having in the next few weeks in the HOMA area. Okay, now of course these programs are designed, of course, with the Cancer Center to, to save lives, to get information out. The most obvious question that I would have and viewers would have is what ex exactly is colorectal cancer? Sure. Colorectal cancer, the colorectal part of that is the colon and the rectum. That composes the large intestine. Uh, now, colorectal cancer can begin anywhere in the large intestine. The majority of colorectal cancers begin as very small polyps, which are just abnormal growths. And inside the colon or rectum, these polyps can grow, and over a very long period of time, years may become cancer. Now, colorectal cancer also involves cancer. Now, cancer is the group of diseases that involves abnormal or uncontrolled growth of cells in the body. Now, if left untreated, these malignant or cancerous cells can spread to other parts of the body. Okay, now the causes of it and who is at risk of developing it, can you touch on that a little more? Sure, good question. Now, it's important to know that 75% of people have absolutely no identifiable risk factors whatsoever. However, the other 25% of people do have risk factors, and these can include a number of things, such as a personal or family history of colorectal cancer or colorectal polyps. Certain types of medical conditions, inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, is certainly a risk factor. And there's other rare, relatively rare genetic syndromes, such as the familial adenomatous polyposis or hereditary uh, non-polyposis colorectal cancer, also called Lynch syndrome. Uh, of these relatively rare genetic diseases, only about 5% of colorectal cancers are associated with those genetic abnormalities. Okay, Doc, we're going to take a break and hear from Terrebonne General Medical Center, but when we come back, I think you brought a list of symptoms of colon cancer. We're going to talk about that and a lot more, so we'll take a quick break. We'll come back more with Dr. Jeffrey Long in a little bit. I'm very involved at Trinity Episcopal Church. My first experience at Mary Bird Perkins convinced me what a fabulous facility it was. The technology is state of the art. I know that because I was treated for a brain tumor on my optic nerve. My name is Cheryl Lane. I knew I needed to be close to my family, my friends, and my church. I'm thankful we have Mary Bird Perkins in our community. It's such a wonderful asset. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. All right, we're back with Dr. Jeffrey Long, and we were talking about colorectal cancer and colorectal awareness month. And the good doc has brought uh, some information for us tonight. We're going to talk about symptoms of colon cancer. Can you explain some of those for us? Absolutely. Now, it's important to know that people that have colorectal cancer, especially in its early stages, or have uh, polyps, uh, pre-malignant lesions, very often don't have symptoms, especially at first. Now, someone could have polyps or colorectal cancer and literally not even know it. Now, if you do have symptoms from colorectal cancer, that may include blood in your stool or bowel movement, if you will. You may have pains, aches, or cramps in your stomach that don't go away. You may be losing weight and not know why you're losing weight. Or there's a change in bowel habits. 
constipation, diarrhea, or an unusually narrowed stool. Now, it's important that if you have any of these symptoms, please talk to your doctor. For the great majority of patients, these symptoms aren't necessarily symptoms of colorectal cancer, but you don't really know that. You really need to talk to your doctor and let your physician sort out why you're having these symptoms. Okay, well that obviously would bring us to colorectal screening and, and why individuals should be screened uh, pretty regularly or, or get a colorectal screen. No question people should get regular screening. First of all, what screening is, screening is looking for, pa for cancer in patients that have no symptoms of the disease. Screening is a very powerful weapon, especially in colorectal cancer, for finding those polyp growths and removing them early before they even become cancer. Uh, you can also, even if you do find colorectal cancer during screening, you can find it in its very earliest stages when it is very curable. Uh, there's no doubt that colorectal screening can save lives. I encourage everybody who's age 50 and older to have regular colorectal cancer screenings. Um, and certainly you should uh, be screened even younger than age 50 if you have a, uh, someone that's a genetic relative that's had a colorectal cancer or has had polyps or if you have inflammatory bowel disease or some other conditions. What's regular, once a year? Uh, it depends. For a colorectal screening, once a year it's not a bad idea to get what's called a, an occult blood test. Very mm -hmm. simple test and it can identify if you have blood in your stool. Yeah. Some of the more uh, tests that take a little bit more effort, such as colonoscopy, you can do that if you have a clean bill of health with your first colonoscopy test. Right. You can do that only every 10 years. All right, now let me ask you, uh, Dr. Long, the prevalence of colon cancer in this area. You hear different figures, different facts. How, how prevalent is it? Well, the frightening statistics are that in Louisiana, it's the fourth most common cancer diagnosis. We see a lot of colorectal cancer. Okay. How does one reduce the risk of, of getting that cancer? What can they do? You know, each of us have the ability to reduce our own risk of colorectal cancer, and the answer for that is a screening. Just like we talked about, starting at age 50, talking to your doctor about what screening tests would be best for you and at what time interval. That will definitely reduce your risk of colorectal cancer, and it can save lives. All right, now the types of treatments that are available, what would they be? Well, now the most common type of treatment for colorectal cancer is surgery. But you can also use radiation therapy for certain presentations of colorectal cancer. And even chemotherapy has an increasing role in the management of colorectal cancer. All right, let's go through the screening test for colorectal cancer. And, and when do you recommend uh, receiving those tests? Sure. Testing the stool for occult blood or blood that you can't see but is detected by a sensitive chemical test is a good idea to do that yearly, especially after age 50. Another good screening test is, and that can be called uh, the high sensitive FOBT, if you will, or stool test. Uh, the second thing that you can do is a thing called flexible sigmoidoscopy. Uh, for that test, the flexible pro uh, healthcare provider puts in a very thin lighted tube into the rectum and lower part of the colon. Now colonoscopy is a longer thin tube that can examine the entire rectum and colon tract. And that's done every 10 years for most people. You have to be a doctor just to pronounce sigmoidoscopy and all that kind sure. of stuff. You're <laughs> polysyllabic, no doubt about that. <laughs> all right, what are the benefits and, and risk of the test? Well, it's important to talk to your doctor and, and, and talk about your specific medical circumstances and talk about what types of screening tests are available so that each person can make a decision about what works for them, what they're willing to commit to do, and, and what would be best in terms of, of, of helping for that particular person, their family history, the risk factors, the best strategy for helping catch colorectal cancer early through screening. Now, it, you know, for people watching and people like me who are of that age, how do I know what particular screening test is, is right for me? Well, the best thing to do, as always, is to talk to your doctor. Tell them you're concerned about colorectal cancer and you want to follow the guidelines so that you get the best screening test. Talk about the pros and cons. Make sure that your insurance is going to pay for the test as well. And then working with your physicians, make sure that you have that strategy. And then very, very important, when you get that recommendation as to what strategy is best for you, follow through with it. And one of the big things you just mentioned, is it covered by insurance? Absolutely. Now the good news is, is that most colorectal screening studies, especially for people over the age of 50, and that's me too, yeah. are covered by insurance. But again, there's no substitute for talking to your doctor and talking to your insurance company. All right, Dr. Long, let's talk about the free screenings that are, are being hosted by Mary Bird Perkins 
uh, Cancer Center at Terrebonne General Medical Center. Can you give us a little more information? This is an exciting service of Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. Uh, for the, this month being colorectal cancer, we're going to be having several screenings right here in the Homa area. And in fact, the very first screening test is coming up this Saturday, March 19th at the TGMC Outreach Center at the Southland Mall. We'll be having the van there that will allow colorectal screening to be done, the occult blood test, uh, between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And I want to emphasize this is free. This is part of our commitment to make sure that we're helping fight cancer perhaps even before it starts through screening. We appreciate you coming back on. You, you're getting to be a regular up here. Well, it's a pl always a pleasure to be of service, and uh, thank you so much for having me here. All right, and I think uh, we have some, uh, some more information up here that the, the public, here's another screening uh, that we could talk about and leave you uh, as we go to a break and remind you that Kanata's will be coming up in the kitchen with Kanata's coming up soon. So once again, Dr. Long, Thanks for being on today. Thank you so much. All right. We'll be right back. Don't go away because we're coming back in the kitchen with Kanadas. It's all next. Don't go.